Tēnā koutou katoa. Good evening. Welcome into the breakdown for another week. Great to have you joining us tonight. Super Rugby is back. These guys are already stretching. What did we learn from the opening round? Don't write off uh, the Crusaders, that's for sure. The Highlanders have come up with the moment of Super Rugby so far. And I know, I know it's early on, but they've been making all the right headlines. And the smart mouth guards, how smart are they? We're going to discuss it with the uh, medical professor from World Rugby a little bit later on. But we welcome in our panel, Jeff Wilson, Sir John Kerwin and Mills Muliana. Where have you been? Where were you last week? Just oh, an extended holiday, was what, it? You've, got, you've downgraded having me on tonight, <laughs> haven't you? You've just sort of, you know, spat me out and brought in the uh, all-black coach and now you want me back, hey? Back into it. <laughs> oh, we've grown up during the week as well, apparently. Have yeah, you? We, 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 um, we're misbehaving last week, Mills. We've decided to be mature, apparently. We weren't on our best behaviour, JK. Do you feel as though you're, you know, on song tonight? Yeah, I'm going to behave myself tonight. You got told off before the show even started last First week. First day at so. school. <laughs> How they bad needed is that? you here. And we, you weren't um, listening then either. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's discuss the weekend. Highlanders, best moment of Super Rugby. Well, it's, I, round I, I, it's, it's round one. It's round one. It's round one. Don't want to get carried away. But what I would say is the, um, their second half try, which was much needed, I must say, because Moana Pacifica had been good in the first 40, 45 minutes. But this hey, try Lee. here. What a magnificent break by Withy, and then it's the creativity. And what I loved about the opening weekend, that I felt that skill won the day. And this was skill. Fakatava, Harmon, Gilbert Beautiful. scored. I don't know if I would have scored the try like that. I would have done one of those dives and put it on the corner, but I think for me, it was just great to see uh, an intent, a belief, the execution. And they needed it. When the pressure was on, they got something special, and the zoo was entertained in Dunedin. Well, you were there. How good was it? Oh, it was the zoo was absolutely humming. Okay. You could barely hear yourself. You know the, the lead-up to that try? Who would have been Falau out of the three of you? Who's giving it that one? The confidence in a game. I reckon it's you, JK. Oh, he didn't pass. What do you want about? Yeah, I wouldn't pass. I know. Who was it then, he Mills? Would, you, would you have done the behind the back? I don't think I would have had the courage to do that. that. That there? Oh, no, I'm, the draw, I'm the draw and pass guy. I'm no, Billy Harmon. I'm just drawing a pass. No, oh, yeah, no, I'm Sam the assist Gilbert. guy. No, no, but, uh, Billy, you've got to take your hat off, though, because when you play with guys like Fakatava, you've actually got to back up and be ready for everything. Yeah, exactly. If you're not, like, that's pretty good skill that you're loose forwards tracking yeah. and thinking, i just got to be ready, because he was actually really ready for it. So yeah. they'll probably do it at touch. It was a brilliant try. It was a brilliant try. JK, what was your moment of the weekend? What caught your eye? Well, this is really interesting because for me it was the referees. So Good or um, bad? You know, often we talk about the referees' influence and I thought they were outstanding on the weekend, especially yeah, on right. Friday night. Um, quick to decide. I think the players knew that, hey, if I'm not careful here, I'm going to be sent. And I think it created a really great weekend of football. So hats off to the referees. Good from you, JK. It was, it was a great start, I, I think, in the weekend. It really was. And we saw and we talked about the less involvements from the TMO. I yes. felt as though we got that. Yeah. Referees were making decisions. It was clear and concise if they went to the TMO. One or two looks at it, made a decision. I was really You know impressed. why? World Rugby's not involved. Sorry. I said I said okay, so You lasted all of about five behave. minutes. So not even that. Three minutes. You were lovely 30. to the referees, but not to World Rugby. What about the new law? Well, the kicking, you mean, and yes. absolutely opened up some space. Yeah. All of a sudden, there's opportunities for 50-22s, which means covering the backfield. Players have to be put on side. It just meant if you've got the intent to counter-attack, the opportunity is there. If you work hard to get back as an attacking team, Mills, yeah. there is space to burn. So, But let's be honest, it's February. I love rugby in February, March and April because <laughs> the conditions are amazing. 28 degrees in Whangarei, you know, for, for the teams to play in those conditions under the roof yeah. makes a significant difference. The interesting thing about that, Mills, though, was when I looked at the new rule and then there was that sideways one, I thought, that's an interesting. But actually, if all your forwards are over one side of the field, and I think Damien had a great counter-attack on the weekend because you can't move sideways. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think it's a great initiative. What about you, Mills? What did, you, what did well, you notice? I mean, I'm, I'm so happy that Goldie brought that up about the Highlanders that I thought, you know, I love it, it's beautiful. You've got to listen to this, man. I want you guys to you know, be silent about this because I love new fans. And this particular fan, beautiful, he's this Crusaders fan. And I just want you to, to listen to this thing because he convinced himself that much of a Crusaders fan that he even thought that they won. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got the job done. It's an impressive win. Well done. Congratulations. Thanks, Outstanding. Look forward to seeing it all again next week. Like I said to Sean, it's a great start to the season. You no, I was talking reaction. about him. I was actually talking about George. 
<laughs> about him and the fact he got the job done because for him he played he played for so so long. I knew I was going to get some grief about it. I, I was and I someone was talked to me about it yesterday, and I said, "Yep, yeah, I know. I knew. I knew exactly what I said." But it was he got the job done. That's what I was talking about in terms of George Bell. You're just so used to the Crusaders winning. Uh, well, every I did pick year the Crusaders the before the game years. just to, to go. <laughs> he against. was. But to be fair, I picked George Barr after a year off, though. That is pretty good. That's what I was saying off. for him. Yeah. I, thought he, I thought he did really, really well. I was, I I was a little bit concerned. That's why I gave you the opportunity. So yeah. Are they allowed sure to change the props yeah. like that? Yeah, because I felt he did. Uh, let's not go there, or we go there at a later date. Oh, OK. No, don't go there, people. No. Don't go there, people. Yeah. Are you allowed to change the props? Like, don't even think about it. That's too early. Really, is time. it? Everyone would have really? done it. Yeah, That's the course. problem, so okay. there's, there's something that needs to be talked about at some point. OK, okay. Nice. we will talk about it. Um, Righto, my moment of the weekend was the world's best 15s player made his debut in sevens and the immediate impact was huge. DuPont, and he's going to have a little dart himself this time, trying to get around the outside of Gonzalez, and he's going to do so! Is this the first score in sevens for Antoine DuPont? You betcha! <laughs> He is an absolute superstar, there is no doubt about that. And people are now interested in the sevens in an Olympic year. It is so important. Michael Hooper comes back for Australia, hopefully next week, into the sevens programme. People are watching. You should see the number of reporters that were there in Vancouver to cover Anton Dupont. And when you're having an impact like that on the game, it's easy to see why. Yeah, I mean, and I think he's an inspirational type leader. I mean, France have always been there, thereabouts. But beating Australia like that... Smashing um, who them. Are, yeah, who are coming right. And then for me, it's about Olympics is an important part of our game for yes. our growth. So if we've got superstars there, you know, I was pretty critical that um, last time when Caleb made himself available and didn't make the side, I thought they were stupid by the sevens. And, you know, we need people like Rico, we need people like that going to the Olympics. But if you're not going to, if you've got to risk too much, whereas they would have said DuPont, do you think DuPont would have been questioned on whether he's going to be selected from the French? Nah, you're in, son. Away you go. It's a, dif it's a difficult one, eh? because you know, in Caleb's case, it's, it's such a, you know, it's a winger is a specialised sort of position, as is halfback. You're coming in and you're sort of in the mix, in, but sort of what sort of impact would DuPont sort of have? You know, he's, he's in there, he's amongst, he's fit, we know how fast he is. It's different to 15s, but given it, it's, it's um, you know, I suppose, you know, Olympic year, this is massive in terms of, of the game, right? And to see a player like that and the way he's performing at sevens. Olympics are in Paris. That's all you need to say, is the fact that he's going to be at home. He was at home last year. This is his opportunity now to try and bring them an Olympic gold medal. It's going to be a real challenge for him, but ultimately, if you're talking about rugby trying to get eyeballs on rugby, this is absolutely the best way to do it. Arguably, the best player in the world yeah. is going to be playing on the biggest stage in terms of eyeballs. Yeah. It's outstanding. Oh, absolutely brilliant. Uh, when we look across at Super Rugby from the weekend, there were some young guns that really stood out. Players that have only been in Super Rugby for the last couple of years. We know, clean slate, fresh coaching team for the All Blacks, which means everyone has to put their best foot forward. And three fullbacks, three young fullbacks, did Jeff. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, when I think about, I talked about Ruben Love in particular last week, what he was going to do for the, uh, the Hurricanes. I mean, he did an outstanding job. I almost said it again. He's got me thinking about it. It's in my side of my head. I really enjoyed what he's doing, but the fact that I talked about whether he'd play 10 or 15, but at the moment it's in the 15 jersey for me. And, look, I just want him to stay healthy. I said that last week, uh, Mills. I really like the skill set. I like his intent. Um, he's a competitor. You know that. Uh, this was a really nice break. He's got great feet. Uh, look, I, I, I'm just really impressed. It was it's just nice to see him get a good start to the season. Oh, I agree with you. I think he's best suited at, at 15. He's got that sort of ability, his flair, um, you know, putting him, and he's, he's been out with injury for a while, so putting him in 10, um, I think it just gives him, you know, too much uh, you know, responsibility initially, but I think his position is, you know, is, is fullback and the way he sort of attacks, his mindset is to attack first, JK. One, of, one or the other for me, like, um, I think, I think Barrett can do it, 10 and 15. Um, Maybe Perifeta can, but I actually don't think that everyone can. So, you know, for me, Love needs to stay at fullback if he's going to have a crack, or they need to put him at 10 and he needs to stay there. Now, when you're a mature 10, you can go back possibly, but I just think he's got a lot of ability, and I like him at 15. I think the interesting thing for me is that we talk about these three young fullbacks, Jacob, Ratumata, Vuki, Nipkins, who had an opportunity at the Highlanders. It's interesting because there is now a spot there available in the All Blacks for the first few tests of the year. Will Jordan 
is out for six months with a shoulder injury. That is new information since we came on here uh, on the breakdown last week, which means there's a position available. And what happens on the weekend? And Shay Fihaki did a and great Shea job Fee with the Crusaders Hockey as well. He was really, really good. Really liked what he did. So it's he nice to see young guys. Look, the one thing, you know, as always, I get excited about the season, Mills, JK, Kirsty, there's a new talent, first game of the year. You know, um, everyone goes in when no one's lost a game, no one's won a game, no one's made adjustments, no one's frustrated. They're all open and prepared to play, whereas now there's some changes. But Jacob was really good. I thought he did a fantastic job. Pace. And Oh, he's fast. He is fast. The Blues let Curtin him go, JK. He's got gas. Yeah, I would, he's got I, gas. I, I, I'm loath to say straight away, maybe the Blues let another really good play, player go, but let's be honest, the Blues have got a whole lot of talent. Yeah. Yeah. They've got a couple of guys playing on their wings who are really, really good. So it's great to see him get an opportunity, which is what Super Rugby is supposed to be about, right? Is to see some I think guys... I think he's special. I can't believe the Blues let him go. I saw him a few times last year, Mills, and you know better than anyone, Fulbert. I just think, yeah, but, with his pace, hold on, hold on, with his pace, Bowden Barrett, his feet. Bowden Barrett, you had yeah, no, Bowden I get Barrett, that. Martin I get that. I get that. But when you look at a guy so, like him, he's want, got pace, he's got feet. Right? Want, I think it's a great How's move. How's this kicking It's game? a great move for yeah. him, really, right? because otherwise he would have been sitting you know, on the bench or not even possibly not playing. Game time. And this is the beauty of Super Rugby, and guys being able to move around a bit. I mean, there are sort of negatives, but this is an absolute positive because now he's going to get game you know, weekly on a weekly basis. And given the way he can perform, man, he was magic. So youngsters that made a mark, what about the old heads? Like cause Scott Barrett, who you pointed out several times in that New Zealand derby on Friday night, JK, yeah. nearly got the Crusaders back into that match single-handedly. Unbelievable. So so for me, we're all puffing out our chest at half-time because we'd all pick 12-plus for the Chiefs, blah, blah, blah. No, no we hadn't. Not all of us had. No, I had. Yeah, all right, all right, all right, go <laughs> But listen, this guy carried the football team on his shoulders. He showed incredible leadership through both words and action. Mm. That angle he took there is a tough action. And he just decided there's no way that the Crusaders are going to lose this football game. And I just thought he was outstanding. It was world class. Oh, yeah. It's absolutely world class. Oh, little. He so, it, so Rob he told us. He proved it last year in the, yeah. in the All Black jersey. He had it the whole season of the Crusaders, Crusaders. last year. Yeah. He doesn't take games off, doesn't take minutes off, yeah. puts up his hand, leads that team. Look, he proved he was the best player last year, and he showed how strong and good he's going to be once again for the Crusaders. The interesting thing for me is, is Rob told us afterwards, coach told us afterwards, that he had limited training. Now, we've all done this as players. Sometimes you want to sort of urge, you know, Warm Get yourself, into, yeah, yeah, warm into, warm into the season. But he just went, nah. boom. Never did that. You don't. Came, no, came, tried to come in ready to go. Sometimes it's important you try Even when it. you were like 29? Well, yeah, well, no, I was done by then, remember? Oh, yeah, I was out. I was, I'd, I'd had enough. Maybe that's why, because I went too hard too early. But when you come in prepared for the season, you see the guys that have done the work, and I'll just quickly change tack there. That's what I saw from the Blues in terms of their conditioning. 28 degrees, mm. 29 degrees, up in Whangarei, and it was outstanding. Yep. So I look at all that group, I, I, I just looked at how well they were prepared. I think we've seen that across a lot of the teams. The conditioning of all the players looked really strong, and we saw that in the All Black camp. The testing came out of that, the yeah, news yeah. came out that these guys are fit. I love it when players are fit and ready to go. Scott Barrett was hugely influential for the Crusaders, but Damien McKenzie in his 43 minutes was equally as impressive, wasn't he? Yeah, absolutely he was. And I think, you know, he, his impact on that team and the way and the style he plays, you know, you see, he sits at the back, he sizes up an opportunity to go, and they love to play that ex expensive game, and all of a sudden they sort of sort of jump on board. You know, I've always sort of wondered whether, you know, sometimes Damien McKenzie does things a little bit different. But the thing that you've got with, with, with the Chiefs is they understand when he's going to have a go. They understand what he's going to do. And he's got a little bit of a balance to his game as well in terms of the kicking. His communication is, is on point too. Take a look at this. Yeah. At this, The Chiefs with Damien McKenzie uh, compared to the Chiefs without Damien McKenzie. The amount of points that they score, the time that they're attacking is doubled, the kicks in play, the influence that he is having Ooh, on this team. It. And it's like Richie Moonga with the Crusaders. We felt it, though, in the game, though, didn't we? We felt it in Hamilton. Huge. All of a sudden, there was a shift. Yeah, huge. Change and, and the Crusaders came out so strong after halftime, and then they lost McKenzie on top of that. The Chiefs, all of a sudden, they were under pressure. So for Josh Uwani, if he has to play this week, if it's his responsibility or the next week, because Damien's out with a... Looks as though he took a knock to his ribs, so he might not be available. They need someone to step up. Caleb Trask, I think, is can floating I, around in their squad injured. as well. He's can, injured, so, injured, so it takes can a Can I ask time. a question? And this is probably for all the managers and doctors in Super Rugby. Why is it secret squirrel when someone gets injured? We just want to know. <laughs> we just want to know. It's like secret. Oh, it's like, like oh, we, 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 we just want to know. <laughs> yeah.
Like, we, we, we're, we're worried about the guy and, and we're thinking, God, oh, I hope it's nothing bad. And if, if he's taken a knock to ribs, just tell us. Like, the public want to know. Can yeah. you please just do that for us? Well, I'll tell you what's not a secret anymore. The Galahad Chiefs want to bring fans closer to the action on the field and they're doing something that no team has done before in Super Rugby. On the weekend, they mic'd up two of their players throughout their entire match, Luke Jacobson, Damien McKenzie. And guess what? Us here on The Breakdown and you at home get an exclusive look. Take a listen. It's absolutely brilliant. I'm not two, boy. I'm not two, OK? What's the wee skinny? What's the skins? It's been connected. And okay, tighter, boy, because Coomsey's not in. Yeah. Coomsey, you're safety. You got one, I got yeah. two, down yeah, yeah, there. Right. They might, they're looking like they're going to Dell. Yeah. Yeah. Come, come, come. Yeah, I'm coming. You got Dell, Dell, you. This just shows us it's not just going to happen, eh? We've got to f stay on them and we've got to stay on them all game. F good reminder, we don't need another. Sit. Sit. Here, boy. Go straight again. Over top, over top, over top, over top. Please. So teens coming off next next breakdown. It's a waste. Lance, we just need to get back into our work around the field. Okay, the tight shit, not get bored of it. Our carry, our clean, and get up, whack and jab. That's all it is. Those four simple things, lads. Let's bring in ten and all of those. Oh, how good is that? Luke Jacobson and his All Blacks teammate Dallas McLeod. That one's got to hurt. Natural leader as well. That is brilliant. Unprecedented access that we have never had to these players before in game, JK. Yeah, I love it. Fantastic. Thanks to the players and the Chiefs. I think it's a great initiative. I love seeing things like that. Um, you know, from a, from a rugby player point of view, it just makes a whole lot of difference. I loved it. What awesome. did you learn? What did you learn listening and watching that? I thought the, the clarity of Jacobs' captaincy when they're under pressure, mm. do these four things, 10 out of 10 and we'll be okay. Like, he's not cluttering it. I thought that was brilliant. Um, you know, just vision from Damien coming into that back line when he says over the top and then collects it. Great vision. Yeah, I loved it because you kind of get an insight as to what really goes on. Yeah. Like we can, like we talk there as commentators, and we try and think, well, you know, what are they actually doing? But unless you're sort of in it and you can hear things that are going on, and in the heat of the battle, Jeff, Look, you know, I that's would like. we've, we've asked for years and we yeah. haven't managed to get it done. The fact the Chiefs have decided that they want to go out and do it is fantastic, and I can't be more grateful that they've given us the opportunity to see it firsthand, give the fans at home an opportunity to get inside what they're thinking and dealing with, and, and even some of the impacts, our insights to how they think and approach the game, some of the conversations. Look, it's remarkable. And if this doesn't become a bigger part of the game now that it's started, I don't understand why. Needs to because be that's the, every other sport does this, finds a way to get it done. Get it done. Whatever it takes be, now. Because you need to be fan-centric. Exactly. That is fan-centric. People will love that. that. I can listen to that all day. Yeah. Because those are conversations that we have when we are players, and it takes you closer. Whether you're a club player, whether you're a young kid, those are the well, things so you need to hear. I had a big, I had a big impression of Jacobson, right? Mm -hmm. But actually listening to him being captain, because yep. you don't know. Yep. I've never heard Sam Kane talk on the field. I've never exactly. really heard Richie McCaw talk on the field. Yep. But there you go. Wow. Good He's work. a good leader. Yeah. 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 But we've never heard these guys no. before. We've never had the opportunity to hear them as leaders, have we? So good. Yeah. Yeah. To and volunteer that up to us and to give it to us, to give us the opportunities, it's fantastic. Yes, I thank... can't wait to hear more of it. Thank you very much. Uh, from the title favourites, the Chiefs, after round one of Super Rugby Pacific. Hold on. Hey, Do, have you, just, you just slid in the title favourites. Where I'm did just, that come from? That, that I'm was glad not it wound scripted you up. on here anywhere. No one did that in the rehearsal. I'm, I'm glad it wound you up. Table. Because What's he's a that? Crusaders fan now. <laughs> uh, anyway, we've no, got I'm a brand off them. I'm off them. <laughs>
Well, how are you then? I've shifted. I, oh, no, I'm, I'm shifted changing after week one. It's a fluid, this, you know, I'm going, it's fluid during the year. I can't None keep up. Around around 15, we'll, we'll, we'll get to see. <laughs> oh, it's coming from you. I can't keep <laughs> up. Uh, anyway, we've got a brand new segment on the breakdown this year. I've got a feeling you're going to enjoy it. It's a different moment from Super Rugby, and we look back at some past footage, Millsy's moment. Yes. What is it this week, Mills? So I was super pumped about the whole weekend that I've just done a bit of work <laughs> about, uh, and you would have seen, uh, Jordi uh, Van Yorn, score his try. A lot of people asking me about who this, this kid is. So he, he is in halfback at uh, the Hurricanes. You watch this wonderful try that he scored over the weekend. And over he goes. What you possibly might not know is that his father actually played for the Hurricanes as well. So Mills' moments this week is the father and son Super Rugby players. And so my f first one, number five, the Bishops, Stephen Bishop, his children were there at number five, Jackson Garden Bishop and, also, also, uh, and Connor, Waisaki Satutu. So Satutu's at number four. At number three, Todd Blackadder, obviously Ethan Blackadder's father. Number two, the Clarks. Now this was a hard one, because I wanted to also slide in Sir Michael Jones and Nico Jones in there, but I didn't get the opportunity. And number one, of course, goes to the Barretts. Who can complain at the Barretts with four sons in there at Super Rugby? Guys, give it to me. What do you think? I like it. Well, the fact I played with a few of them, which is yeah. nice. I, and I, I yeah. was fearful of a few of them as well, to be honest Who with you. Who were you fearful of? Well, most which, of the which forwards. Fathers? I was in most <laughs> of the forwards. Um, oh, Smiley Barrett. I mean, I'd, I avoided that at all costs, to be fair. Um, there was a rumour you went down like a... Like a like no, a, I told you like that before a, the show, in his last game... On television. And, no, I, I, I wouldn't say it was a Hollywood, but it was in it was his last game. It. It, it, it was. It, it, he got me quite good, to be fair, at the side of a ruck. What I was doing near a ruck... And I you got him no red-carded. What's it? No, no, yellow in those days. It was yellow. Can I just ask you, if we look back at that list, uh, usually we don't compare current and past Ooh. players, but I'm going to ask you to do it this time around. Which sons have outplayed their fathers? Oh, who's oh, who's, yeah. who's oh, better? We're not going there. There is no Come way on, tell us. we would do that. You know what my dad said to me once? Son, I never made a mistake. <laughs> Dads never make mistakes. You can never compare the son to the dad. Smiler was brilliant. He got all his ability. Yeah, but what about gave all his children? ability to his kid. You just be thankful. He gave all the ability to his four wonderful rugby players. We can't, we can't players. go there. We can't go there. Stop okay, no it. comparisons. Kirstie. No. No. You just don't no. want to throw any Dangerous. mates under the no. bus, that's why, no. because you'll see them all. Uh, well, there are still plenty more to come on the breakdown. We talk about these smart mouth guards with World Rugby's Chief Medical Officer. Uh, JK sits down and puts Mark Robinson on the grill. But first, it is time for our trivia question. Remember, they're not playing this year. It is just for you at home, our trivia question. What if I know the answer? You can't tell it. Oh. You can't tell it. Your question, and we'll give you the answer right after the break, is on the screen there. Who was the first third generation All Black? Do you think you know? You've got a few minutes to have a think about the answer. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back into the breakdown. Great to have you joining us. Now, we asked you the trivia question, and that was, who was the only third generation All Black? Did you get the answer correct? You, yeah, I know, you know. Do you know as well? For the what? first time ever. You know what? the answer. They know the answer the when they're not known. actually playing. First tour for the All Blacks. I sat beside this man on the bus for my first tour. Oh, Liam think... Barry. There he is, grandfather Ned, his father Kevin, and Liam Barry. And coached them at North Harbour, actually. Good man. He's a good man. Very good man. Great man. Absolutely brilliant. Well, that is the answer. Yeah, I know. I'm stoked. That is the answer. You well, got... it was. I sat beside him on the bus. If I didn't know that one, play. then I'm in trouble, right? His sons can play too. Yeah, can too. Absolutely. Okay. Can well, too. we've got a guest standing by. We're so lucky on the breakdown to be joined by World Rugby's Chief Medical Officer, Professor Aina Falvey. And the reason why we've got Professor Aina on is because these smart mouth guards have been rolled out in Super Rugby. They're used by match day doctors to help identify players who've taken a knock and need to go through the HIV 
AA process. Now, we saw a few of these in the New Zealand derby between the Crusaders and Chiefs on the weekend in particular. Anton Leonard Brown in the final five minutes of that match. And a little bit earlier on, Quinton Strange. There was a bit of confusion, so we want to clarify this. Uh, Aina, thank you so much for joining us on the programme. We really appreciate your time. We know it's uh, early over there in Ireland. Um, so tell us, what is the process in layman's terms of for rugby fans, what is the process for these smart math guards? How do they actually work? Yeah, so uh, this is a safety initiative we're really excited about uh, across rugby. It's being introduced from January this year across all competitions that start. So we'll be we'll be putting an instrumented mouth guard in about eight thousand rugby players' mouths over the course of this year. Um, and the 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 purpose of this and why we set out to do it was um, we have we have we have two particular issues that we need to deal with. The first is one in six of the concussions that we see in rugby present after the game. So they're essentially an event where the player has an impact. Um, and for whatever reason, they don't show a sign or symptom. Uh, they play on, they finish the game and afterwards or a day later, they say, I don't feel very well. Uh, and they're reviewed and they're diagnosed with a concussion. Now, as a, as a team doctor for many years, I've always said you can't manage something unless you can actually, unless you know about it and you can deal with it. And what's more important even than that, we know that if somebody has a bang that's significant to cause a concussion and they stay on the pitch, for every 15 minutes they stay on the pitch, it delays their recovery for up to three days. There's, there's data to support that from the States. So not only, not only in the longer term does it affect them, but in the short term, they may not be playing properly. They may be at more risk of further injury. So we need to understand this and to manage it. So in the acute setting, it's really important for us to try and identify these potential concussion events earlier. The second part of this is... The only way for us to, to really understand and change the injury mechanisms we see in rugby is to have a lot of data around what stuff is happening, why things are happening. So you'll have seen some alerts at the weekend um, and there were alerts, but that was on the, against the background of us gathering data on nearly 6,000 head acceleration events over the first Super Rugby round. So even though these events seem like there were quite a few of them, they're, they're actually quite uncommon. Um, and those small events are much more easily understood when they're put into the context of, of, of the bigger events across the game. So we set, we set out with this, we've been gathering data on this since we went down to Otago in 2021. We were welcomed by the union down there in Otago and the University of Otago. And we did some work in the community game down there. We expanded that into the Premiership in, in England and the AP15s, which is their women's competition, the Curry Cup and the Farrah Palmer Cup last year. So we, we had over 200,000 data points on which we based these thresholds. So the threshold is a player is wearing a mouth guard they receive an impact that exceeds the threshold, both in linear and angular acceleration. So that's a big impact. There's no doubt about that it's a big impact. Um, and what we're saying is in those situations, that player comes off for a review. They may not have a concussion, but they're coming off to have a look at, to make sure they're okay, to make sure that these guys aren't struggling on the pitch without anybody knowing about it and putting themselves at further risk as they play. So based on those thresholds, um, we expected about one impact per game. But what is going to happen is you're going to have games like in, like in the first game uh, in, in Super Rugby where you have more than that. So we had, we had three alerts in that game, which, uh, be, which is more than, than anticipated across the game. But if you look at across the weekend, we had, we had eight alerts across six games. So um, if, we go, if we go to the Northern Hemisphere, uh, yesterday afternoon we had our eighth game in, 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 uh, in the Six Nations. And up until yesterday, we'd only had one alert in the first seven games, uh, in, in, uh, sorry, the first six games in, in Six Nations. So um, basically this is gonna, it's going to even out over a course of the competition, but we're looking at about a possibility of about one extra alert per game. I know, in regards to that alert, when you see that spike, where does that information travel to? How does it get to the sideline? And who's responsible for making that decision? And, and a, a follow-up question, if a player then passes his HIA and is to return, is there a process that's ongoing for him after the game? Great question. That's exactly it. So the first point is that the, the, the mouth guard has the technology to measure the impact. So they're called gyroscopes and accelerometers, and that's the technology on tooth. It, it, the, the prevent mouth guard um, 
does its analysis on the tooth and then it sends a Bluetooth message and the Bluetooth message goes to the match day doctor on the sideline. Now there's a possibility for them, the, the team doctor to get that information as well as they wish, but the match day doctor is the one who, who gets the message. And if they, if they receive an alert, they say, look, Jeff's had a, had a bang that exceeds the threshold. We need to have a look at it. He lets the match officials know, and then you will come to the sideline for the review. That's not saying that you've got a concussion. It's saying you've had a big bang and we need to have a look at you. So you come off and if you're okay, you're, you're, you're free to go back on. But like any other suspected concussion, you do another test after the game. And at 36 hours, you do another test, which is called the HA3, which is basically ensuring that you don't have symptoms that come on afterwards or after a couple of days. So the player is looked after properly. And at the end of the day, this is a, this is a safety initiative. Um, like anything else, nobody likes change. It's always different. When we bring in something new, it's an uncomfortable time to bring it in new. But we're betting it in uh, and we're confident that as time goes on, we'll be able to work with Super Rugby and indeed and indeed um, Six Nations Rugby to make the process better. In, in the Chiefs game, we saw one of the issues we've had in the early rounds, which was there was a delay uh, in one of the alerts. We've seen that in one of the other games as well. And this is something that from a technological point of view, the data is there, but sometimes there can be a small delay in getting that message to, to the sideline. This isn't without precedent. You know, we've had these kind of teething issues when we brought in, in the HIA. I mean, you'll all remember when the HIA came in. I was working as a team doctor at the time. There were many issues. Lots of people complained about it. Lots of people didn't like it. We are now all comfortable with it. We use it. We accept it. And it's an integral part of the game. It's exactly what's going to happen with these mouth guards. These are the way forward. This is this technology is going to help us understand the game better and enjoy the game better. Just like what you showed a while ago with that with the with those players mic'd up in in the Chiefs game. Amazing stuff. That's that's the way the game is going. We're bringing the game forward technologically. So I think from our point of view. What we must remember is that just even a year and a half ago, we had an episode where we had a player who had a suspected episode. The video review doctor took about four minutes to review the case. After he spoke to the team doctor, it took another four minutes to get the player off. So we had a player coming off for a review just over 10 minutes after they'd had that event. What, what, what I look at that as a team doctor and I say, look, the right thing happened here. The player who needs a review comes off. Sometimes it takes a while. You'd hope that it, we can improve it so that that decreases, but it's a work in progress and we're all working together to make it happen better. Professor Aina, we've just realised we need to get you on for an entire show. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining us on the programme, though. It's one of those complicated issues. You're clarifying things for us. We really appreciate your time. Thanks, guys. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Professor Aina Falvey joining us there from World Rugby. Before you three get stuck into it, I think it's probably important that we hear from the teams because that's where some of the confusion has come out is there were coaches and there were players across the weekend that were confused by what happened. So we'll hear from them and then we can have a discussion. Okay. We're, we're just trying to find it. We're having a few technical issues, just like the, smouth, the smart mouth guards are so, at the moment. But basically, so, Scott Barrett came out. So did Clayton McMillan. Here it is. Obviously, yeah, we want player welfare, and, and that's uh, paramount. But I think if you're influencing the game when key players are going off um, and they don't know what for, I think that can be frustrating for a player. So I think, yeah, there needs to be a a happy medium somewhere within it. Yeah, we're all well aware of, you know, um, protocols and <clears throat> obviously Anton didn't feel like he needed to come off, but obviously stuff that uh, the medical um, team see on the sideline indicated otherwise, so he came off. The tough thing for us was really just the game was right in the balance. You know, you're making decisions around, do you exhaust your bench? Could it go to extra time? Do we need to save somebody? Um, and really those... <laughs> Those decisions got taken away from us. They're, they're trying to bed in their technology and, you know, it's going global whether we like it or not. we just got to live with it. And, um, you know, it's for the, the best interest of the players' long, you know, viewpoint, which is a which is a thing that uh, obviously we all have a, have a duty of care to pursue. 
and um, yeah, we'll just get on with it and deal with the repercussions as they unfold. And we watched the games last night and saw um, saw what happened, and, and we just feel that probably it's it's a good warning. I think it's an electronic device that sort of may signal something, but it's got to be checked by humans. Uh, and I think there'll be a balance in it, and everybody knows it's for the benefit of the, the players and the game. So I'm sure they'll come to a you know a, a decent mix of electronics and human. <laughs> OK, well, it was really good to get uh, the insights from the players and coaches who were impacted from the first game in Super Rugby, and it was good to have an expert opinion as well. Now that you've heard that, so you've got some information, I want to get your opinions. Is there a place for these smart mouth guards in international rugby and in Super Rugby, JK? Yeah, I think it's a fantastic initiative. I really love it. I think that you need to throw some of the old protocols out the door. So you don't take them up the change room, we're going to do it on the sideline. If Anton Leonard Brown comes off, it should take as quick as possible, not 10 minutes. Needs to, they need to speed up the assessment, you need to be experts on the field to go, you're OK Anton, you're back out there, right? If they're concussed, then that's easy, they're gone anyway. But this has to happen. Um, we want our game to be safe. I think technology is a great thing in our game, but it's got some teething problems. Just got to change a few things. So um, this in particular instance, um, Dr Aina there just mentioned it. It was a technical issue. He just mentioned that fact, which needs to be ironed out. You sort of get the sense that you feel as though they're a bit unlucky. That they got to a, the very first game first of the game. competition where everything was new yes. in a critical moment. Yes. Um, and we know we happened to Quinton Strange a little bit earlier on in the game, and he himself was like, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. But clearly, the evidence is there. They've done the work in behind the scenes, the number of hours and the research that's been done. Just ultimately, the tech side of it is yes. something that the, the players and the coaches have to have confidence in. Yes. That's yes. the most important thing. If you're going. Now, I, I want it to work and I think it's an important part of, of protecting and helping the players. But I think they got unfortunate that, that in the very first game, when the game was on the line, they get a spike, they have to make the right decision, the technology let them down slightly, and they're not anticipating. But there wasn't that many incidents, Mills. Eight, so, eight incidents or eight alerts, 6,000 different events across so, the first round of Super Rugby, which is crazy, but not all of those registered a high threshold for those players to be pulled off. Eight of them did. Yeah. And Eight I, out of 6,000. Yeah, that's, I mean, you're right. I think, I'm, I'm with you, Jeff. I think the fact that, you know, it's, it's got to be tested at a higher level, right? And they have. They've done it overseas as well. But a bit unlucky in terms of sort of what happened in that first round. And given the circumstances yeah. of the game too, my only thing is, you know, sort of the move the thresholds. is sort of the threshold thing. You know, when do you get, do they sort of constantly move? And I suppose they're gathering data to be able to sort of say, well, here's the threshold. Is it sort of, does it, is, it, is it different from, you know, your front rows compared to your, your guys out the back? Because I know I'd be biting my mouth go big time if I was at the back because someone's running through because I, I don't want to make a tackle, right? And so I probably needed to, to, to come off. So is it the fact that you're biting down too hard? What, is, what does it kind of look like? I've got some theories on that. I've got some theories on that. Um, are our impacts bigger than the Northern Hemisphere because it's mm. drier or we're faster, you know? That, and, and I believe we need to change the game, but I'll talk about that later. Well, uh, you also talked earlier in the week to someone pretty important. There's a Shape of the Game meeting in the UK with all the big wigs, um, but you put Mark Robinson on the stand, JK. Yeah, I went to see the big head honcho, the rangatira, the co marcher of New Zealand rugby, Mark Robinson, and asked him actually what he's going to be doing up north. But I think the game is at a stage we, we recognise there's some amazing things happening in the game. When we see rugby play well, better than any sport on the globe, we all believe that, passionate about it. Unfortunately, there are just, you know, games and scenarios at the moment where that's not happening and it causes a huge amount of frustration. And we want to reduce or minimise that as much as possible. And we have to work within the current constructs of governance um, and, and processes that lead that at the moment, and that is challenging at times. I fundamentally believe that um, the game is in a space now where people recognise we do have to shift. You know, we've obviously um, been leading a lot of the conversations as to what law trials and change can look like in our own domestic competition, some fantastic feedback on a lot of the work we've done there. We, we know we can continue to evolve and work better in that space. But it feels like there are more and more countries coming to this forum with a view that, yes, we, we do need to create um, a different product. We do need to create more spectacle, more entertainment, more tempo that you talked about. When we set up for law change cycles, it does take a long time and it is, it is frustrating. It is something that we are going to go to London um, you know, at the end of the week on and, and talk about how we can be more nimble and agile in this space. 
I think we, we are really hoping we get um, into the forum and we just create the best possible forum for decision making. So, you know, I don't want to sit here and promise what the outcomes are going to be here, but we need to make sure we have the right information, you know, right people in the room, the right insights, right level of, you know, the balance of, um, you know, fan focus and what the fans want and, and player safety, for instance. And then we come out of there with a really unified approach to move quickly to address some of the things we're talking about. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to preempt exactly what the outcomes might be. But if we get, if we get that process right, then I'm really hopeful we, um, we come out of there with some, some really strong messages for the game globally. I fundamentally believe these are the most critical meetings um, we've had at a global level of the game with World Rugby for, for many, many years. Absolutely pivotal moment in time that we come out of these meetings with something more tangible in terms of how we can change, and we're really committed to that. It is a crucial time for the game over the next couple of weeks. As we say, the head honchos from all over the world will be meeting in the UK. And interesting what Mark Robinson had to say there. You need to get the right people in the room with the right insights. Well, shortly, Sir John Kerwin is going to give us his wish list for World Rugby to future-proof the game. But first, Super Rugby Opiki, the best women's competition in the world, kicks off on Sky Sport and Sky Open this weekend. There's two matches coming up. The first from Hamilton, the second from Invercargill. We've got you completely covered on Sky Sport 1. But let us remind you what happened in 2023. No my hooky my welcome back to the breakdown. There have been so many big topics to discuss during this one. You're looking forward to this oh. next segment because as we say, representatives from all over the world are coming together in the UK this week to discuss the future of the game. So JK, important people are there when you're heading over? Well, actually, this is a worldwide exclusive. Now, if I was chairman and I want you to vote for me, and I'm going to get it on likes, which is a modern thing to do. <laughs> this is what I'd do with the game. This is what I'd change, because I'm sick of them taking so long, right? So the governance needs to change. Right now, there is 51 votes total. That means there's a whole lot of trading. So Mark Robinson wants to go over there, and if three people don't want it to change, it's not going to get through. So one nation, one vote. Speed of play. We've just talked about impact. We need to speed our game up like rugby league did, right? Scrums in a minute. Line outs in 40 seconds or 30 seconds. People can come off and on as they like for replacements like we saw the other day. Sanctions, carding. Everyone on report, people. We just got to put people on report. I pay decent money. Well, I don't, but you guys do. You guys do. We all pay for, for our coding and, and our tickets. So... Why would I go and watch a game with 15 against 15 like the World Cup final it ends up 14 on against 14, 14 on 15? That's wrong. Innovation, we need to move faster. You know, there's always a consequence for laws, and so we need to move. If it's not right, change it. And here are my 10 compartments, although I think there's 11. <laughs> Don't forget to <laughs> I vote like the for 10 me. There we go. Though. Guys, what are, you, what are you thinking? Which which one do you want to talk about? So there's one that was a little bit confusing. So the use it call, I hate the use it call. Use it means use it. So you say it once and they've got to kick straight away. They call it a caterpillar. You know when the halfback's at the back of the no. back of the ruck and then they come in and they caterpillar so they can take time to kick. When the ref says use it, use it. So I just wanted to clarify that. I'm curious about one of these laws, if we keep this one up so that we can all read through them. Uh, no red cards, everything on report. You've taken that from Rugby League, a game you also love. Uh, do you think that will work in rugby? I asked the referee the other day when was the last time he saw something malicious? Someone actually being nasty, and that was at the last World Cup in 2019. These guys are not going out there to hurt each other. They are amazing people. Put them on the report, and then the sanction is longer. Some of those things have gone too far for me. 
in terms of points, giving away points as sanctions, as sanctions in game. But in terms of the idea, and particularly the most important one is the governance one, because that is what slows down the process and I think a lot of the progress in our game. The changes that we clearly believe need to be made to speed the game up, to become more fan-centric, the fact that it is part of an entertainment package. The, the part of that is interesting, though, is that there's still international rugby, test match rugby, which has its place, but then you've got all these other competitions around the world. That's what I love about Super Rugby right now, because we are essentially playing by our own set of rules and laws. How we apply them, what we use, and World Rugby are allowing us to do that. But the conversations have to be wide, and that's why I'm a supporter of what you're doing. Because ultimately, you're an advocate for the game to evolve and get better, and become better for everyone to enjoy. OK, let me just explain something. I heard, voce de corridoio, voce de corridoio, don't tell anyone. For example, a possible person who's running a Six Nations side might want to be chair of the Six Nations committee because his team hasn't won, right? Which means he can protect them from a playoff. He would say to the possible chairman that's coming in, John Jeffrey, I'll give you my vote if you make me Six, six Nations champion. Because we're an antiquated, amateur, old school way of voting. We've got to get rid of that. We've got to move fast. It's got to be about the game. The second thing that I want to emphasize, and I know you're going to vote for me, Goldie, is that we need to speed up our game so we take some size out. You know, you just heard about the impacts. If we speed our game up, like rugby league, players are going to lose weight. And that means less impact. But we've got to move now. We can't wait four years. Do you still, do you still think losing that weight from a technical aspect, from, from scrums and things, because you're going to get some disgruntled front rows, right? That are going to say, hey, we still want to scrum. We still want to see... And, and, and don't get me wrong, so do we, right? But are we going to lose some of that aspect in terms of, you know, winning? Are we just, are we just better off just going into, to a scrum then? Well, I think it becomes the game for everyone again because then all of a sudden you've got guys who are more effective at line-out time. And the fact you've got taller guys, you've got more athletic players, I think there's a balance in terms of the technical aspect of the game and the balance between the power and the skill, the aspect of it. But I just think ultimately, when you think about, there's 51 votes yeah. uh, that it goes to, of which there are 11 that have three votes each, yeah. which is the Six Nations, the Sanzar Unions and Japan. So they are controlling the, the narrative about what's going on. And then there's a lot of single votes here or there, but ultimately the Northern Hemisphere has all the power right now. Oh, totally. Northern Hemisphere and one of the Southern Hemisphere that might go with them. For example, Kirsty, how many rugby players have Tonga and Fiji supplied to the world and are supplying to the world right now? An unlimited oh, amount. They get no vote. Yeah. Tonga and Fiji do not have a vote, right? That is ridiculous. So we need to make it simple, we need to move a whole lot faster and we need to get out of the amateur era from a governance point of view. And we need to change our game. We need to make it... I don't want to, like, I don't want to change them all, it's just that once it stops, use it, right? The, the scrum, get there in a minute and set it up and go. Right? Just speed it up. So the governance side of it, that you're saying, you know, the Pacific Islanders don't get a vote. I mean, that's a massive issue. And they've, you know, obviously World Rugby has always come out and said there's a, a governing issue there. So I mean, what, how, do you, how do they fix all that? I mean, there's, the simplest way is to actually just give them a vote or, or send someone down. We've spoken about you know, off-screen, JK, send someone down to try and help them fix that when they're sort of giving them sort of funding. Well, Gus Pichot had it. a crack last time, right? Up against Sir Bill Beaumont to try and become the chairman of World Rugby. And he was never going to win because they'd come together, they'd banded together, they didn't want change, they don't want to change. Now, I'm not saying the fact that they don't do good things for rugby, but ultimately everything at the moment is shifting to JK. The, the goalposts shift so very, very often, so much. So, mate, I, let's, let's get a wave of support behind you to the fact that we have a voice, the fact that New Zealand and the Southern Hemisphere, I believe, needs a voice. The, pu the public needs a voice, that's what I'm interested in. That's why I want you, I'm serious about this, right? I'm very, very serious about this, because if we don't change now, Mark Robbins is going to come in two months and say, we, we didn't get it through because someone else voted. So vote, I want to get as many likes as I can. If I can get a million likes, then we can go to them and say, the public has voted. You know, I know my South African friends think, oh, just because you lost the World Cup. It's not about that. It's actually about speeding our game up, making for everyone. I believe that if we change our game very quickly, we'll start getting back to a game for everyone and just engaging our fans. So you don't think we're going to get that out of this meeting in the next two weeks, the state of the game? So they're all meeting, but you do not think anything's too, actually going to come out of it? Too much horse trading. They'll be trading votes. They're doing stuff like that. It's happened so it's for eternity. It's a pointless meeting. That's what you're saying? Pretty much. That's what I'm saying. I'm totally saying that. I'm saying our system is antiquated. We've been saying 
we want to change the rules for the last five years, and they don't change. They come out six weeks before the World Cup and they make a few changes, and it wrecks the whole World Cup, same as last year. And, you know, we show our initiative, 20-minute red cards. Yeah. What does World Rugby do? Nah. Right? What happened in the World Cup final? We could add two red cards. So we need change, we need it fast, but we've got to change the voting system. So vote, people, vote for JK. That campaign that's not a campaign. Like. Like, like sorry. It. Sorry. On like. social media. Like on social media. Yes. I'm not allowed to say vote. At Sky Sport NZ or at Sir John Kerwin to get in contact, to give your thoughts, your opinions, and most importantly, uh, if you agree with JK, uh, then like. Like away. See, that's probably the hardest thing I've had to do today, is agree with JK. I was going to say that. It's the hardest thing. Look, that, that's... that. That's really important, Goldie, because we can all disagree, but I'm actually, like, people stop us in the airport. Like, people want change and they want it now. It's not, like, Sir Bill Bomber is an amazing guy, love the work he's done. I mean, John Jeffrey is apparently going to be the new lead, but we actually need to move faster because it's what the public want. Well, and, and it's in the best interests of the game. We Amen. Have to, you have to leave your egos at the door. I've got a feeling that this isn't going to be the last we hear of this, especially if we get your feedback as well. We'll be able to continue uh, this over the next couple of weeks on the breakdown. Uh, don't forget Moana Pacifica, who of course uh, are playing the Fijian Drua this weekend. It's going to be a fantastic mm. game in Melbourne. Have this incredible uh, ticket offer for you. Affordable tickets. Adults from just $20. There's their home games this year. FMG Stadium Waikato. That's the new one. It has been moved from uh, QBE, Albany. Uh, seven Stadium and Go Media Stadium. You can scan the QR code if you would like to go along and support one of the brand new franchises in Super Rugby. It is Super Round though in Melbourne this weekend. All teams will be playing in Melbourne. You were there last year. What to expect, Mills? What can you expect from the weekend for punters that are heading over or maybe watching it on Sky? Well, I think you know, some positives from the, from the weekend that's just happened, right? The refereeing was outstanding. May it continue a few crossover games as well. But uh, I think the level, the level to sort of you know go to another level that's a skill in execution. I'm looking forward to it. Does any Australian team beat a New Zealand Blues team Hollanders on the weekend? Represent us. Represent us well over there. there. You're in charge I'll of the Sky crew, so uh, they know well. They know how to have an event. Oh, we're having Blues a Hollanders. Blues Hollanders. Let's go. A side bet. It's gone from a bottle to just a glass of wine, though, no, apparently. It's no, it's a bottle. <laughs> there you go, you heard it here first. I do apologise, Lars. I'm never between the lead. these two. Enjoy Super Round in Melbourne. We've got you completely covered on Sky Sport, plus the Six Nations, the Rugby Sevens, and Super Rugby Opiki starts next weekend. We'll see you back on Sunday. Hello and welcome to Melbourne and also welcome to Super Round here in Melbourne. Over the next three days there's going to be 12 teams and six games all played here at Amy Park in the one spot in Melbourne. Exciting matches coming up over the next three days, so let's head inside Amy Park. The sporting capital of the Southern Hemisphere, Melbourne, it is putting on a show for Super Round. Uh, a fantastic spectacle, uh, Super Round at Amy Park, can't wait. Sandwich in a big tackle, here they all come, and seven Reese gets the opening try. And Timon gets another one. Festival we have lined up for you over the next three days.